Hello, this is Paolo and today I'm gonna show you how to make a full body morph for a poser figure using Blender. In case you are new to Blender, I suggest that you pause this video and go to blender.org and download Blender for your operating system. There is a version of Blender for all major platforms including macOS, Linux and Windows. And Blender is open source, so you can download it freely and start working on professional 3D modeling today. Blender is one of the best mesh modelers in the market and it has superb UV unwrapping features. All in all, it's an indispensable tool for the 3D artist. This tutorial only requires a basic understanding of modeling with Blender and it can be followed by people who didn't use Blender before but have some basic 3D modeling experience. A full body morph is a modification of the geometry of a poser figure that is not confined to a specific sub-object or group. A poser model like Victoria or Michael is divided in several groups named after the bones that control that figure. Some groups are, for example, L forearm, R forearm, head, chest, abdomen, and so on. When you model a morph that spans several parts of the body of the figure, you are creating a full body morph, also known as FBM. FBMs are used also to fit clothing from one figure to the other. For example, the Shadow Dancer outfit, originally made for Victoria 4, does not fit the new Daz figure called the girl. By using Blender, I was able to change the outfit and make it work with the new figure. So, let's take a look at what is required to create an FBM. Poser stores the geometry information about the model in files saved using the standard Wavefront OBJ format. This is excellent news for us because OBJ is an industry standard recognized by many 3D programs and Blender had excellent import-export plugins for OBJ files for quite some time. There are some requirements though in order to make this work. In a nutshell, the process of creating a morph includes loading the original model, apply the modifications and then saving the morph into a new file. To make this work with Poser and with Da Studio and Carrara, we need to respect four fundamental rules. Number one, the morph file has to be saved by using the OBJ format. No big surprises here. Number two, we cannot add or remove vertices. Move all the vertices you want any way you want, but no additions and no removals. Number three, we have to preserve the order in which the vertices were defined. And number four, we have to preserve the names of the groups in the original file. While Blender up to version 2.48 was able to work with rules one, two, and three, it didn't have support for OBJ groups. And so it was not possible to create FBMs with Blender alone. But because Blender is open source, I was able to update the import-export plugins and add that critical piece of logic to support groups. And I'm pleased to say that starting with Blender 2.49, Release Candidate 3, which is the latest version available at the time of recording this tutorial, my updates are part of the distribution. So. All you need to do is to be sure that you have Blender 2.49 or higher and you're all set. So now that we know what we need to do in order to create a morph, let me switch to Blender and load the Victoria 4 OBJ file. So here it is how it's done. We go to File, Import, and you click on Wavefront OBJ. and you navigate in the runtime to find the OBJ file. In any poser runtime, of course, you'll start with the runtime directory, then go in the geometries directory, and 
In this case, the file that we need is under DAS people. And here it is. So you click on the file and look at this area here. What happens? If I click on the file, the name is now copied here. Then we confirm with import and this little dialog box pops up. So here are the options that you need to use in order to import this figure for creating a morph. The end guns and as F guns is not necessary. It doesn't do anything bad. It's just that normally poser figures are created with the triangles or quads. So we don't need this option. Lines as edges, we don't need that either. Keep vertex order, this is vital. Image search is not important. And if you deselect it, you know, things will go a little faster. And of course, polygroups is important. Now, in your installation of Blender, very likely this button is in the off position. So just be sure that it's pressed in this way and then press import and we wait a little bit and here is our figure right click on it to select it and we can get a little closer and let me show you how we can start looking at the groups here in this area vertex groups we can see all the names of the vertex groups, all the groups that were part of the OBJ file. So let me switch to edit mode. By default, all the vertices are selected. Let's press A to deselect everything. And uh, let's try this, let's test it. So click on the group. Let's, uh, let's select the head, all right? Now head is the active group and let's click on select. Wow, it works. <laughs> so let's switch to that area a little closer, a little closer and click on here for uh, switching to selecting edges and uh, this other button here to hide the background geometry and let's take a look here it is this is a group let's try something else all right let's click again on a to deselect and let's find the right forearm so let's click on this select it works so if we press s now for scale and we start moving things around well look at that it works <laughs> so command z actually control z on the pc to undo and let's get to work creating a full body morph we are going to do some basic deformation to the figure and uh, see how we can apply the resulting morph using DAS Studio and the free morph loader plugin. Okay, so trying to create a new complete figure from this base model is a little beyond the purpose of this video. So what I'm gonna do is to apply a series of exaggerated deformations to this model and then export the result as an OBJ and try to apply that inside that studio you could use poser as well to the base figure and see how it works in that way we can see the whole workflow process so let's switch to side view and I'll make available all the hidden lines as well in our selection then I'll press B for the rectangular selection and we'll just select part of the abdomen We switch to the front view and uh, now I'll uh, switch to proportional edit and press S for scale. With scale we can use the mouse wheel to select to change the influence area 
and then move the mouse in order to scale down that portion of the body. All right, that looks terrible, but just what, what I wanted to do. So now let's switch to the head, select the head, and then I'll press Shift H to hide all the unselected parts of the model. And now we can work directly on the head and focus on that area of the geometry, which is very convenient. So let's take a look and I'll move around just to be sure that it is the area that we want. And again, we can press Alt S for the inflate, deflate option. And oh, that's too much, yikes. All right, be very careful with the movements of the mouse. And uh, that's it, it's you know nothing special, but just enough to make it different. So that looks good. And there is a little bit of scaling there uh, at the connection with the neck, but it's not a problem for now. We are just trying to have a proof of concept right now. And the last modification we're gonna do to this model is to uh, change the proportions of the arms. So I'll go back to edit mode, pressing tab and press Alt H to make everything available again, everything visible. And um, we're gonna switch to the X axis mirror. And again, using the rectangular selection, select portion of the arm. And uh, again, I'll use S for scale and just shrink those arms a little bit just to make them look different. And that will complete basically our morph. We have applied deformations to three areas, the abdomen, the head, and both arms. And uh, it's time now to export this geometry and uh, apply it to the base figure. So file, export, wavefront OBJ, and let's go to a different directory one called Morphs. And I'll enter a new name for the file. I'll call this uh, V4 Morph for Victoria 4 Morph. Very original, very creative. And let's confirm the operation by clicking on the export button. At this dialog, we're gonna keep the selection and rotation on the edges off, materials off. We don't need materials, we are just doing a modification of the geometry. The UV mapping option is good. Polygroups and keep vertex order also need to be selected, to be on. And let's confirm this with the export button. And that's all. The file is written. We are all done. We can just switch to DAS Studio and load the base figure, the base model here, Victoria 4.2, and apply the morph to it with the plugin that I mentioned before. This will take just a minute. All right, here it is. So let's frame this a little better, and we're gonna call a plugin called Morph Loader. There is also the Morph Loader Pro, but I think that the Morph Loader is either free or costs like $2. It's very, very affordable. So it's definitely a good option to use and it works as well. So we select our V4 Morph file we generated from Blender, confirm. And uh, let's change the name to something different. So something that is more representative of what we are doing. It's Blender test, and that will be the dial that will be created in DAS Studio to apply that morph. So at this point, Morph Loader is loading the OBJ file, applying to the original geometry, and everything looks good. No error messages, so it's a good sign. Let's take a look at the parameters. Scroll down, and yes. Here it is, Blender test. So now we can scroll that slider and we see the body change as expected. That is exactly what we model in Blender. There it is, one stop solution for creating morphs for Poser. Let's start 
back to the, from the basic figure and frame the header so we can take a look at just that one isolated area that we changed and uh, boy that camera the default camera is applying a little bit of distortion there it's not really flattering so let's select the camera although it's 65 millimeter by default for an extreme close-up we get less distortion with 80 millimeters so okay nicely framed so now let's select the model for our morph and apply there you go it's she's squinting a bit so before and after and there are no other deformations there are no problems with the geometry that is exactly what we did in blender everything looks good everything looks correct so it's a success it's working just fine and uh, we can take a look at the rest uh, of the deformations the arms are skinnier are thinner and uh, the body the, the abdomen is definitely deformed okay again before and after and let's take a look at the entire model to see if anything is out of the ordinary but no everything is fine so here it is this is a one stop solution to creating morphs in blender for poser the same system can be used for adapting clothing or to create clothing so i hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation again my name is paolo ciccone see you next time